What's up everybody? I hope you're doing great today. Welcome back to that car vlog channel. If you don't already know, my name is Andy. This is my 1976 Chevy C10 Scottsdale Longbed. And today, or at least in this episode, over probably multiple days, we'll be do making more progress on the front end of this truck. So I've been working steadily on mostly the front end of the truck. I got the rear end drop done. There's a video for that on the channel. I'll put a card up here to that if you haven't seen it. And right now we're working on the front end. There's actually videos of that progress also on the channel. I'll put, make sure to put links to all the videos I mentioned in the description below so you can go back and check those out. My goal is to get the front end back on the ground so I can get the engine out and then I can get it lifted back up and take everything back apart and work on the frame. But I've actually made some progress off camera, quite a bit actually, but we're gonna take a look at that progress right now before we carry on. All right, so here we have one, and two freshly reconditioned steering knuckles. So here we have, hang on, let me remember which one's which. Here we have passenger side. This all nice. I've cleaned it all up, painted it black, except for the parts that didn't need it, like the spindle. And then here's the driver's side. Looks good. It's got four coats on it. These were an absolute pain to clean up. Um, <laughs> man, these things were bad. I'll throw a picture up here right about now showing you just how bad uh, one of these looked before I started on it or just shortly after and then I remembered, hey, I should probably take a picture. I cleaned so much crap off of these. At its thickest, here's actually a piece of the grime that came off of one of these. We're talking a quarter inch or more thick. Just chipped away off of these things then of course cleaning you know clean up rust with you know wire drill brushes like this one and uh the, the one inch and i got a two inch uh, cup style somewhere over here you know, it might be on it's still mounted to the drill that wire brush sandpaper just everything i can think of to clean that stuff up you'll see in the before picture the spindle actually had surface rust on it and that was all that was, was merely surface rust just went over that nice and gently with the wire brush and it took it right off and it looks good. Uh, you can see a little bit of scarring on one of these. This is the driver's side one. I don't know if you can see it or not. It's right there. That's one for when the uh, wheel bearing failed on that side a few years back. Um, but I don't see that being a problem. It didn't do it. It didn't do too bad. It's very light. I don't see any reason to replace these. If in the future it becomes an issue, then I'll replace them. But since this truck will never be a daily driver again, I'm not extremely worried about that. But these are done. These took quite a while. Of course, everything takes quite a while with my projects because I simply don't have time to work on them. But these did take some time. They were quite nasty. Not as long as the control arms took, but definitely took a while. Here we have... The tie rods. So these are actually the fully assembled inner, outer, and sleeve. And these are actually the old ones, obviously. If you look at them, you can tell they're the old ones. So this here is the passenger side. The outer is the shorter the shorter of the two. Inner is the longer. And if I hold it up and orient it, yeah, that's the passenger side. This one. And this is the driver's side. I can also tell because it's the nastier one. This one's just rusty. It's got some grease from the, uh, from the joints here, from the boots. This one has grease and oil from... from the boots in from everything else. I've already assembled one side, that'd be the passenger side. Here's the new ones. Once again, you got outer, it's a shorter one. Here's your inner, and here's your adjusting sleeve with the clamps. I'm going to show you how we put those together for the driver's side. Right, and here I have all three components to do the other side. So we open this box up here. We have the these are all AC Delco. When I plant, started planning to this job, I bought a lot of AC Delco stuff from Rock Auto. So there's the adjustment sleeve. Um, I'm going to do the Watch JR Go thing and give you part numbers too. So this is the adjustment sleeve. It's an AC Delco part 46A6004A. Alright. Here is the inner. And it actually, actually, I went and had um, labeled them because the boxes are the same size. So here is the inner tie rod end. Of course, it's the longer of the two. That's AC Delco part number 46A0090A. And here's the outer. Once again, it's the shorter of the two. 
and it's a AC Delco part 4680110A. All easy to find on Rock Auto. That's where I got them. Now I've already done one side, so this will be, and uh, both both these sides were adjusted. The way they came off the truck adjusted to so close to the same length that I really can't tell a difference. So that's how I'm going to do these. Now, of course, you want to have this stuff properly aligned when you put it back together. But that's something that I can either drive it to an alignment. I can get it close enough and drive it to an alignment shop or tow it, whichever way. But get it close enough, put it together, and take it to an alignment shop when it's all when it's time to get it back on the road. Um, I'm going to take the bags and put, put, put them in their boxes just so that I don't lose them, you know, kind of like I did with the other ones. outer. Here's the inner. The reason I don't want to lose these bags is they're smaller bags inside them. They have cotter pins and stuff like that and I don't want to lose that. Cotter pins and grease fittings. I'd like to not lose as many of those as I can. I've already got to buy one replacement grease fitting for one of my ball joints because I lost it. It's fine, like three bucks. And this is the adjustment sleeve. It's got the two, the two clamps that go with it. And I don't think there's anything that goes with that. We'll put it in the box anyway. I take the thread protector off of these. It's kind of neat. I'm sure the wife will figure out something to do with those. Now, one of these, it's the at the inner tie rod end, the longer one, is actually reverse threaded. So it's left hand threaded. So you got to find which end of this is re re reverse threaded part of the sleeve. And I did not get it the first time on the other side and I probably won't get it the first time on this side. Takes a second, but you'll know. There it is. Okay, that's the reverse threaded end. And then the outer is forward or right hand threaded. It's just regular. So now what I'm going to do, I'm taking, I'm going to line these up with the, with the sleeve. First thing I'm going to do is not turn in the direction that tightens it, which can get confusing when you're dealing with one end being left hand and one hand, end being right hand. All right. I'm going to do a mirror of this one. So here's my outer, here's my inner, here's my adjuster. I'm going to start threading this in. It took 35 full 360 degree turns to get this, each one of these to the right spot. And it's going to be the same on this side. And it's going to go, I'm going to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, I'm going to do that until I get to 35. Another good tip is if you want to make your life a little bit easier, make sure to put the clamp on the first because it just slides on like this. Otherwise, you got to try to force it over it. It just works a lot better to slide it on first. So we did 35 full turns to get that end. Now we're going to take and do 35 in the reverse direction, which is forward threaded on the outer. Okay, so 35 full turns on each end. Now. Not all trucks are going to have the same number of turns. If the alignment was set up differently, it may be different on yours. This was mine, and it, it works fine. They're so close. I mean, they're maybe within a couple turns. So they're so close that even a short drive to an alignment shop should not do any harm whatsoever. You see I've got this where one is turned sideways, one is turned up. That is because if we turn them this way, this outer end is going to connect into the steering knuckle and this is going to connect into the cross link, the, uh, the drag link, the, the, the bar that runs from one side to the other. Now that that's together, I'm going to turn my clamps, put them back over the adjusting sleeve here. There's a bolt head on one end and a nut on the other. Now these are 10.9 metric bolts. I'm not going to worry about torque right now. I had the torque for a 10.9 figured out um, before. I'm going to have to go find that again. Anyway. On these AC Delco adjusting sleeves, this nut is a 13. 
and the head bolt is a 12. Kind of weird, and yes, they're metric, even though you're working on an American car. I'm going to take these, and I'm just going to torque these down, tight enough to where these tie rod ends will not freely spin. If you look right here, on this one, they no longer freely spin. So we're going to tighten those down. I'm not going to put any specific torque on them. I just don't want these to freely spin. When it goes time to put them on the truck, I can loosen these up and kind of tweak it a little bit so that they line up with the hole, so you know they can fit in the holes on the, the uh, cross link and on the steering knuckle just right. Also, you want to make sure to put the grease fittings in each one of these. Now, each one comes with a grease fitting in each box. It's the exact same fitting for both ends. Um, here's the outer. It goes right here in the top, and then on the inner, it goes here on the side. This one is a little more difficult to start, but once you put the small ratchet on there, it's just a small th um, quarter-inch ratchet. It's nothing big. A 5 16 socket it just goes right in pretty effortlessly and you've got grease fittings like everything else I'll grease those up right before it's time to put it into service now that that's done we can start doing things underneath the truck and as for the cotter pins there's four total one for each, each uh, tie rod end I just stuck them all in this one box I like to label it or I won't but that'll be what holds them and that way I can find them again and as for the old ones, yeet, right into the scrap metal and drop a stupa four on my foot, almost. I'm smooth. All right, y'all, we are back out here. I had to stop and after the last thing I did with the uh, tie rods being thrown over there because it was time to go in, getting a little, start to get dark, all that crap. So it's the next day. And I'm out here now with the center link or we might call it the center drag link or whatever. For those who may not know, this is the part that connects both sides of the truck together so that when you turn the steering wheel, it turns both wheels at the same time. Now, this, this had a lot of crap all over. Of course, it had grease and stuff on it, and I cleaned that off. I'll throw a picture up here. I took a picture of it before while I had it in the vise. I got that cleaned up. Now, I haven't painted it or done anything to it yet and I'm probably going to do that later because like I said it's all going to come back apart and if, then I'll take care of it. It's not very bad. It's got maybe a little bit of surface rust forming, some discoloration, but this is probably the cleanest part of the entire steering system on this truck. Uh, so it wasn't much to knock it down, get all the grease off of it and take it back down to just its bare form, not necessarily bare metal, but you know, old truck part, but it's, I mean, it's still perfectly good. Now, I was for a second questioning how this is oriented because I didn't remember from when I took it off, but if you ever find yourself questioning how this is oriented, it's actually quite simple if you know how it goes together. These holes are tapered, so here's the top, this is the top, it's wider here and it's smaller down here. Same on the other end. One end you stick the pitman arm into, which, here's a pitman arm, and on the other side is an idler arm. And then our tie rod ends, Let's go ahead and grab one of those. Here's the one for the passenger side. Tie rod ends go in right here. Of course, you can, I have the casting it on, so it's not going to go in here, but it goes in right here. Again, your large taper is here, smaller over here to allow for the tapered part here. So first thing I'm going to do is mount the drag link up, the center link, whatever you want to call it. Also, I bought a new idler arm. Um, the old idler arm is actually over in my Dakota. I was using it as a weight for hold down body panels while I took the headliner out. It's heavy enough. Um, for some reason, it does have already some surface rust. I'm not really sure what that is. Maybe it got scuffed up in shipping. Um, and it's sat in my truck for two years. So, in this, this truck. So, maybe a little moisture added. Who knows? That's not a big deal. I could just knock that down. I could just knock that off paint over it it won't be you'll never know I don't really care um, this is an AC Delco part number A6C1081A also got that on Rock Auto we'll go ahead and get these mounted up and then we can go on to the tie rods alright first thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to install the new idler arm now I've already taken a castle nut off of one end there's the other end with the castle nut the, they're exactly the same on each end all this thing does is allow the other side to swing. Now this is the uh, the arm that's mounted to the frame that this 
mounts to. Yes, that will eventually be cleaned up and painted like everything else. Put that on there, that cast on that, and I can tighten that down. I'm not necessarily going to torque them. I'm just going to make sure that they're on there. All right, now, and I won't actually fully tighten anything until I've got everything put together. So it really is that simple to, to put the idler arm on the truck. Uh, like I said, that will have to be tightened down, put a cotter pin in it. That would be literally the last thing that I do, though. Now I'll attach the center drag link to this other end of the idler arm. Go ahead and remove the castle nut. And to the pitman arm, which is the arm attached to the steering box, which is the actual input to the steering sh um, linkage. So I'm underneath the entirety of the truck. And I'm going to try, this way of course, to mount this to both ends at once. Of course, one end goes on Pittman, one end goes on Idler. And the challenge with getting this up here is you got this giant cross member here, which wants to get in the way of the giant cradle. The other reason I didn't tighten, tighten anything fully because I'm gonna have to make minor adjustments. In this case, see, I figured this might happen. If, if I remember right, I actually had to do this to take it off. So I'll take the castle nut off of the idler arm and pull it down. Then, ins then insert. So what I had to do was remove the idler arm from its mounting arm. So I got that backwards. Then insert it into the end of the cross link and then put the other end back into the mounting arm. Now that they're both together, it's kind of holding itself on just from, I guess, tension. And I can put this cast nut back in on top of that one. So on top of the idler arm on the mounting arm, then we'll get the other castle nut put it underneath right here I'm hoping you can see all this to mount the cross link to the idler and then I have a castle nut here it'll quit sliding away from me right here to mount to the pitman arm and this is the other reason why I'm not painting this cross link yet because I'm mounting this thing back up around all kinds of just nasty stuff. The pitman arm's got stuff all over it. This cradle's got stuff all over it. I know I'm going to get more crap on this cross link that I'm going to have to clean off. And I'd rather just go ahead and have it clean perfectly for it painted and not, you know, have to clean it off with the paint. It won't, wouldn't take much, maybe a little degreaser to get whatever gets on here off not a big deal so now that's on there I'll give all these castle nuts a, a, a tightening like I said not really to torque just to more like comfort because this thing's not going into service yet no time soon actually Make sure that's tight all right let's go ahead and tighten these things down I like I said, I'm going to snug these nuts up. I got a 15 16th. It even fits the new castle nuts. I'm going to do this one from the top actually. Because of the tight clearance with the frame, I got it on an extension. I can get that from the top, no problem. So tighten that up, that up, and the one on the pitman arm. And I'll just make sure that, you know, while I'm working on it, they won't go anywhere, although they really shouldn't because it's not driving. Just in case there's anyone wondering, well, he's got an idler arm. Did the idiot buy a pitman arm? Yes, I got a pitman arm as well. But that's coming later. It's here. It's been here as long as everything else has. But it's going on later. So what I'm doing right now is trying to knock just the worst of the rust and stuff off of these shims. I'm not going for perfection. I just don't want all this loose rust and everything around these parts I just painted, you know. I'm trying to be a little clean about it if I can. Already got one or two of these done. And I love my little setup here. So no, I don't own a bench grinder. So I made a bench grinder to run the wire brush with. 
I'll drill in the vise and it actually works pretty darn well. These are the vise grips. And it works great. Alright y'all, so the next thing I'm going to do here, I've already done the driver's side. And now we're going to do the passenger. So, it's time to install the upper and lower control arms. Now if you see here, my cross link and um, idler arm are back on the ground. I messed up and uh, once again got things a little out of order. These are actually in the way of me getting mounting these things back up. So I've dropped the cross link and idler arm back on the ground. And I'm going to mount up the lower control, well, the lower control arm first. Now, if we remember from cleaning these up and painting them, here in this control arm cross shaft, there are two dimples. There's one and there's the other. Those dimples have to line up here on the other side of the cradle. And these right here. I'm hoping we can see them. Let me bring some light in here. So there's some nubs. There's a nub right here. And there's a nub right there. Now that one's a little, eh. Turns out just really one of them on each side lines everything up. This has to slot into that dimple to make sure everything seats right. And then, right here, there's two holes. In this one, and in this one. So the cross shaft sits right here. You can see it's curved in the exact same size and shape. And then we have these U-bolts right here. These U-bolts go around the cross shaft and up into the cradle, like so. Okay? And it's hanging itself on like that. So they're going to go in like that. The cross shaft runs through it. And then we've got washers and nuts right here. Two on each, one of, um, two on each U-bolt to hold everything in place. So I'm going to go ahead and get that up right now. We're going to do a little time lapse of me putting that up. Now we'll get on to the upper. The tool you're going to need for attaching the lower control arm is just a ratchet and a 7 or a seven eighths socket. I got it on a half inch drive. Yes, this is an impact socket because I actually do not own a 7 eighths that fits anything smaller than 3 quarter. And well, that, uh, that won't fit in some, in, the, up in some of these spaces where I got to swing a ratchet. So half inch, 7 eighths impact socket. attached and if that looked like that was an absolute pain well that's because it was I'm sure with a jack and more proper things like power tools air tools that would probably have gone, gone a bit easier but yeah five ten minutes it's on not the biggest deal definitely could have been easier now we can do the upper all right so now to put the upper on we got these two posts right here above the cradle I'm going to start by sliding these shims that have the curved face on first. Now these have to go flat side against the frame. Slide those on. Now we'll put our control arm on. If you install the cross shaft correctly, then the convex part of that shim or washer, whatever you want to call it, will meet up with a concave part on the cross shaft. 
You don't want to slide that on too far. Because we want to put the shims in behind it. Now I'm putting mine, setting mine back to the exact settings it was when I took it apart. So we're putting three shims behind the curved washer shim on the rear post. And then on the front post is getting four of these shims. That's exactly how it was set up when I took it apart. Now they're going to try to flop around, don't worry about that. Go ahead and give that a push. And then make sure that your convex shims are actually seating into the concave parts on the cross shaft. As simple as it sounds, they are not going to self-align. You're going to have to make sure they stay that way. We have our three-quarter inch nut. That goes on next on each post. All right, let's get that thing thread as far as you can with your fingers. Now this will actually push down. It's supposed to. The other side did. Now do whatever you can to get the three quarter inch socket and extension onto those nuts. So what I've got again is a half inch drive, three quarter inch socket on an extension. And I will get those tightened up in whatever manner I need to without screwing up my paint too badly. All right, and there it is. The upper control arm is installed. Now, I may have mentioned earlier in the video, I'm not putting these on, all these parts back on permanently. They will come back off after the engine is out and when it's time, you know, so I can do more work with the frame and this engine cradle and all that stuff. Um, but if you are torquing, putting this stuff on permanently, the put, torquing it down, um, here's what you'll need to know at this point. Your lower control arm U-bolts. Um, if you're doing a truck through, through 1974, set them to 45 foot-pound. 75 or later, set them to 85. Um, these shaft nuts here for the upper, for your C10, set them to 70 foot-pound. All right, now get the... Uh, Steer knuckle and spring on here. Actually, no. Before I do that, I'm going to go ahead and reinstall the cross link and the idler arm, and then we'll start putting the steering knuckle and spring in here. All right, so the cross link and idler arm are installed, hooked back up to the pitman arm on the other side. Now, the Haynes manual refers to that cross link as a relay rod, which I guess makes a lot of sense. You input steering into the driver's side and it relays that action to the passenger side so it makes sense if you're installing these permanently your idler arm mounting bolt so that one that attaches to that other arm um, set that one to 30 um, idler arm to cross link set that one to 60 as well as the pitman arm to cross link set that to 60 as well that is again if you're installing them permanently i'm not doing it permanently yet now, onto the steering knuckle. All right, time for the steering knuckle. This is the passenger side knuckle. Here's where the tie rod will fasten in. Here's for your lower ball joint and your upper. Of course, upper goes through here, lower goes through this bottom hole. Try to line these things up. Now is a good time to go ahead and get your spring in there. And I will be putting in the new lowering springs because I'm not putting the old factory rusty springs back on my freshly painted part. Spring orients like this. The smaller end where it curls inward, there is an area that sits around perfectly up inside the cradle. This other end, you see where the spring just comes to an end. This lower control arm has an area shaped perfectly to accept that. We just set that in there. do is I'm going to get my, my floor jack and I'm going to place it up underneath the lower control arm. I'm going to start gradually raising it up and guiding this spring in as well as this knuckle to the upper ball joint.
All right. Now that is in there. The spring is properly lined up. Both ball joints are properly lined up. Now we'll put our castle nuts back on their respective ball joints. The big one goes on the lower. Small one and lock washer go on the upper if they will quit running away from me. with a 15 sixteenths, maybe a 7 eighths, now it's 15 sixteenths, and I forgot from one day to the next. And then the upper tightens with a 3 quarter. Once again, if you're installing permanently, torque your upper ball joint nut to 50, your lower to 90, and of course, any castle nuts that get installed, make sure to put a cotter pin in so they can't turn loose. We'll lower this thing down. There goes the jack, and now the whole assembly is hanging there on its own. The next step will be connecting our tie rods from our knuckles to our cross link. Okay, next we'll be putting the tie rod assembly in place. So, in previous parts of the video, you saw I put the tie rods together, inner, outer, and adjusting sleeve. So now they're going to go in here. Now I've gone aside and turned the wheel all the way to the right to where the steering linkage is as far right as it'll go. Make it just a little bit easier to get that end of the tie rod into place. Right down here. Of course, is the steering knuckle. We're going to turn that out, and it will be a little bit of jiggling and stuff, and turning and whatnot to line everything up. Here's the tie rod assembly. Now, here I did loosen the clamp bolts so that I can move these tie rod ends back and forth as I need to. Once again, not very much, just enough to line everything up. So. Feed this in like this. The front of the truck is this way. So feed this in this way. It goes into the cross link. And the other end obviously goes into the steering knuckle. Like I said, this is going to take some finagling. You have to move, move things around to line everything up just right. I've got this rod here. It's actually the extension part of my um, lug wrench that I can use to move this as I need to. Once it's all lined up, seated in place, put the castle nuts on, and then tighten the adjuster back up. It's all in there, it's lined up, it's tightened down. Now the inner tie rod castle nut tightens with a 15 16th, at least that's what I had to use. And this one on the end, the outer, tightens with a 7 8 If you're installing these permanently for tie rod stud nuts, according to the manual that is, torque those to 35 foot pounds for both ends. For the tie rod clamp bolts, these right here, which remember tighten those down once you got everything lined up. Uh, for those, the book says 22 foot pound. I know on similar bolts that I put into here, into the upper ball joints, I tighten those to about 28. That's about the figure I had. So 22 to 28, and I reckon you should be good on that. Now that's all the tie rods, cross link, and everything connected. Let's put some uh, rotor hubs on here now. Alright, and you're going to see some cell phone light because all my rechargeable lights are dead. And the skies are getting a little dark because the storm's starting to roll in. We're going to get this part done tonight if I can help it. So before I put the 
rotor slash hub back on. We got this backing plate. Now I didn't clean it up. I just knocked all, all the loose crap off of it. I'm going to put it back. So it orients like this with this big hole on the bottom. Big hole on the bottom. And with the lip pointing outward. There's three holes. Line them up. I'll have to do it with two hands off camera. And then there's three half inch bolts to hold this on. Alright, backing plate is on. And like I said, it just knocked the loose crap off of it. Um, I brushed the rust out of the bolt threads so they thread in easier. That's installed. Very simple, very quick. Now, this beast. This thing is heavier even than the lower control arm. This is the combination wheel hub and brake rotor. So this again is going to be done off camera due to both lighting and the fact I need two hands and it's just easier. We have this. The inner wheel bearing sits in here. It's held in by a seal. By a press in seal. And then once that is in place, slid up over the spindle. Then I'll stick my my outer wheel bearing and the washer in the front here. I don't know if you can see that. There. Stick my inner wheel bearing and washer in the front, as well as the large castle nut, and tighten that down. All right. So we have the rotor and hub on. We have the castle nut tightened. Now this is a one and one sixteenth inch castle nut. Um, I could not find in the book if there was a torque spec on this. So I'm just doing what I did when I did the wheel bearings before. Snug it up. Put a cotter pin through it like you're supposed to do anyway. It's not going to go anywhere. Because cotter pin is going to hold it back. All I do now, a little dust cover. There we go. It's not perfect, but it doesn't need to be because it's not permanent. And now we can put some wheels on this thing and get the front end onto the ground. Oh yeah. Looks like crap against my fresh, freshly painted parts. But before this is all said and done, before this thing goes back in, into dr driving on the road, all this will be replaced. The, the hub, rotors, wheel bearings, all of it. I may reuse the backing plate and paint that up, but all this is going to get replaced because these were turned once a few years ago while I was still driving it I had them turned and they told me that it was the last time they could safely be turned so I'm just going to replace them all right wheel time Alright y'all, there she is. As you see, the trusty Dakota pulled her out from under the carport. First time she's been out in over two years. And also getting a, a light bath because it's decided it's going to rain today too. So here she is. Here's the two inch front end drop. And that, you can definitely tell, is lower than it used to be. There's still at least a couple inches from this view between the, the, uh, the wheel arch and the top of the tire. But that looks really good. I like the way that looks. A two inch in the front supposed to be a four inch in the rear it's going to be hard to tell without the bed mounted but that's going to be a little bit too much of a job for me to do by myself so i'm not going to bother with that i'd love to get a preview but we'll eventually see it but already just stance wise this thing's looking good i never wanted it slammed just a bit lower level oh yeah this is looking great i like this that is going to wrap up this part of the c10 project and the suspension drop entirely Finally have the entire suspension drop on this truck. Now we get on to the underhood mechanical stuff, which is what I'm really excited for because that's the part that makes it run. Anyways, I hope you all enjoyed the video and this whole build so far. If you followed along so far on this build, thank you so much. Um, and I hope you're, you'll stick around for the rest of it. Yes, it takes absolutely forever. 
it took me over a year and a half just to do the front end of this truck and then usually that's a couple two or three weekends for most people so it gives you an idea of how much time I don't have but every bit of progress I make on this truck I'm super excited for anyways you'll want to see more on this truck make sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already also on that truck because I do things on the Dakota too and I try to put a wide variety a wide-ish variety of videos on the channel Make sure, of course, again, to subscribe, hit the notification bell if you haven't already. Follow on social media, Facebook and Instagram at that CarVlog channel. And if you happen to have anything you'd be willing to let me review and drive on the channel, because that was the original idea for the channel, and you're relatively close to the Knoxville, Tennessee area, East Tennessee, maybe Central, um, hit me up on social media, let me know what you got. All offers are, are appreciated. I do always drop a list, a link to a list in the description below of a list I put together cars off the top of my head I'd be willing to review I'd be interested in reviewing and driving on the channel but I can't think of everything anyways thanks y'all so much for watching you have a good one we'll see you next time